In most playthroughs of Skyrim, you want to attack your enemies while avoiding being attacked by them as much as possible. But what if that wasn't the case? What if the only way to attack your enemies was to be attacked? Well, one illustrious item from the Dragonborn DLC allows us to accomplish this demented fantasy. Can you beat Skyrim with only Mirax robes? Since I'd have to do the entire Dragonborn DLC without having to attack, I'm going to console command the robes in as soon as possible instead. The only rules are that I can only damage enemies with Mirax robes, I can't wear any other gear with armor or enchantments, and no companions can assist me in battle. With all that out of the way, let's begin. After watching an Imperial Archer gift Lokir a brand new arrow, aww, how sweet, I make my character, a Breton who looks like the vocalist of Hermaeus Morris' thrash metal band, and name him Karim. Any similarity to any Dragonborn is entirely coincidental. Alduin lowers the property value of Helgen by a significant margin, and I escape into the keep with Rayloff. I then conjure my robes out of thin air, which allows me to absorb 15% of spells, but more importantly... When enemies hit me, there's a high chance tentacles will spawn around me and explode, dealing 100 poison damage to anyone nearby. After escaping the keep, I choose the Mage Stone to increase restoration and alteration faster, take care of a bandit, and buy Oak Flesh from Lucan, which allows me to take more hits before going to Apocrypha. I watch as some bandits commit Sudoku. <laughs> and have to punch my way through some webbing, as the cloak can't break through. This doesn't damage any enemies, so it's fair game. A spider gets a taste of its own medicine, and I come to the devastating realization that poison damage doesn't work against Draugr. No matter, I simply run past them all and lure the Overlord into a spike trap. The game punishes me for this by sending the Overlord into the back rooms. I reload a save and this time manage to snag the Dragonstone and get out of dodge. Leveling up, I get Novice Restoration so I can cast healing more often. I put on a fancy new circlet and buy both Stoneflesh and Candlelight from Captain Voice Acting. Handing over the Dragonstone, I get tasked by the Jarl to slay a dragon and come to yet another devastating realization. For whatever reason, Mirax robes have no effect on dragons. Welp, this might get awkward later on, but for now, I just let the local guard take care of it. The oh fuck you? No! Dragon soul in hand, I almost get ganked by a fugitive in the back of a tavern, steal a jail key from a guard, open the cell door, and the person acts like they're still locked up. 100 gold will secure my release. I said my fine has been paid. Now let me out! Right, right. Oh, look at that. I seem to have lost my keys. You just sit tight. I'll get around to it eventually. It just works. <sighs> I love Bethesda quests and how they branch out based on your choices. I also level up. Picking Novice Alteration and Regeneration is my perks. For now, I take a ride to Windhelm, discover Kynes Grove for later, take care of a witch, watch some bandits and a dragon duke it out, and take the Atronach Stone, giving me 50 more points of magicka and 50% spell absorption, which when combined with the robes adds up to 65% spell absorption. On the way to High Hrothgar, I stop a drug dealing kitty. The finest skooma, the sweetest moon sugar, at a fair price, of course. Ah, a snitch, eh? Can't have you running to any guards now, can I? Never should have come here. So I can take a supply. Never buy no school from the gas station, bro. I, if, you, if the in ain't in your contacts, don't never go to the gas station, bro. I went up there at 11 o'clock last night, tried to give me some school, man. Bro, I smoked that shit, woke up, my motherfucking eye was right here, and my other eye is still right here. Explain, bro. And make my way up to the 7 billion steps to the Senior Citizen Center. Training with the Greybeards goes as normal, and I even find a way to level restoration indefinitely. Since the wind counts as a magic effect, I can absorb magicka from it, allowing me to heal endlessly without running out. On the way to Redwater Den, I tussle with a Spriggan, which I thought would end a disaster, but actually ends up going pretty well.
Why am I going to Redwater Den, you ask? Simple. To get high. Wait, that's too meta. No, it's for telekinesis. Using this nifty spell, I can not only grab a key to ensure my freedom, but also level alteration at an astounding rate. But first, I get confronted for being the false dragonborn. I mean, sure, I may have some passing resemblance to a certain religious figure who shall remain unnamed, but come on. I return the golden back scratcher to Nick Valentine and put on some new kicks courtesy of the cultists I just wiped the floor with. I then return to the Yarl and obtain the legendary Axe of Whiterun, a treasured artifact that I shall cherish for the rest of my day. I also buy fast healing from Captain Voice Acting, which will prove invaluable for the rest of the run. Some alchemy levels me up, where I pick Apprentice Alteration as my perk. The College of Winterhold might be useful for buying spells, so I get the meet and greet over with. You know, I've heard stories of a guy trying to copy me. Does the whole tentacle thing, wears robes, even copied my name and spelled it backwards. I decide to take a magic boat ride. We'll cast off immediately. And arrive in Solstein, a land plagued by this... What's his name again? Mirror? Spice Rack? Whatever. I have to stop this imposter and clear my name, for I am Karim, champion of Hermaeus Mor- Okay, never mind. I decide to practice my telekinesis, but end up reloading a save due to stubbing people's toes being considered a first degree felony. I finally make it to Ustengravy, where some necromancer spells have no effect on me and I easily send them to Apocrypha. Running past some Draugr, I learn the Become Eucalyptus shout, clear out some spiders, Hello there. and fail to recover the horn from Dolphin. I increase my proficiency in alchemy, get rudely awoken from my nap, So you're the Dragonborn I've been hearing so much about. I think you're looking for this. We need to talk. Follow me. And fast travel straight to Kynesgrove since I discovered it earlier. As it turns out, Idra doesn't follow you that far outside of Kynesgrove, so no, can you beat Skyrim while being chased by Idra isn't coming out anytime soon. I'm looking at you, Nurbit. I give Salok near a back massage. before watching him get murked by some giants and mammoths. Good timing, I suppose. After learning what a dragon's soul tastes like, I get caught in the middle of the Greybeard's Dementia episode and then spend literal days hurling a bucket into the sky to level my alteration. After talking to Dolphin, I get jump scared by Orgnar and the Courier. I'm just a cook, lad. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. Ah, a letter from the Jarl. Moving up in the world, eh? Looks like that's it. Got to go. I ain't look- Huh? Beat a guy in a magic duel without lifting a finger. You call yourself a wizard? I challenge you to a duel. The gods will be the judge of that. Round one. Never should have come here. You win! Witness a man with incredible calf strength, level up, and get the perk Mage Armor, which makes my flesh spells more powerful if not wearing armor. Luckily, Murak's robes don't count as armor. I then get the spell Iron Flesh from Tolfdeer, witness the college take down a dragon, snag the soul for myself, give Melbourne literally everything I own. You can't go to a party at the Thalmor Embassy dressed like that. Use some good old fashioned sexual harassment as a distraction. Mm. Don't let me keep I hear elf women are insatiable. Really? Yes, maybe that would be just the thing. 
She seemed to be playing hard to get when I spoke to her earlier. Huh. Eriker, right? He was talking to me earlier. I could tell what he was after. I hate working these parties. Some of the guests are nice, but there's always a few like Eriker. Please tell him to leave me alone, politely. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew it. No woman yet born has been able to resist my charms for long. No, I'm sorry, but I can't go anywhere with you. I won't. Please, I, I must get back to my duties. Don't you dare walk away from me, you slut! Do you know who I am? Please, sir, leave me alone. I can get some new drip courtesy of the Thalmor. Oh yeah, and I also kick their yellow asses. I'm then sent to the Ratway to find the guy from the trailers. But, there's one they fear. In their tongue, he's Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. Where I end some vagabonds in Thalmor with regards to her Mamora. I also get the recovery perk to at least somewhat alleviate the magic of regeneration debuff from the Atronox Stone. Doing some more telekinesis levels me up once more, letting me nab the physician perk. I then go on a little journey to find all the tomes I can about alteration magic so that I may become even stronger. After learning some more about warping reality, I throw a fork into the air long enough that I become better at brewing potions, buy detect life from Tolfdir, and prance around solitude seeing into people's souls until I can get alteration dual casting. Even more gallivanting around Riften and Whiterun lets me get expert alteration, which I put to good use level grinding and skill boosting and bucket tossing and cheese throwing and life detecting and- Oh yeah, and I get the stability perk so my flesh spells last longer. Right. I head over to a bandit camp where I take care of some brigands and- Oh no. Oh no 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 Ignoring that, I waste some swindlers in their den and fail to kill Kamatu as he keeps regaining his health for some unexplained reason. Fine, I'm going to do the quest for her, but only for the coin, okay? Luckily, the shades, despite being undead ghosts, are affected by poison damage, except for the ones who awkwardly float near me as they weren't programmed with unarmed attacks. Like with the Spriggan, I thought the fight with Malkram was going to go horribly, but my spell absorption sees it through pretty cleanly. I get praised by Meridia, dropped from hundreds of feet up by Meridia, and return to Meridia for a little tomfoolery. Standing in her beam of light causes me to absorb it, endlessly refilling my magical pool. Casting telekinesis in one hand and healing in the other allows me to just tape the controller and let it sit until I get 100 alteration for the Atronach perk, giving me another 30% spell absorption. With the perk, the robes, and the stone, I now absorb 95% of all spells that hit me, and have used my dragon skin ability 100%. Making it to Skyhaven Temple, I get some Forsworn to hit themselves. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! Use spell absorption to absolutely disrespect some Akaviri traps, cut my hand's throat, get lectured on art history, talk to Bro Shrub about a crazy old guy, find the crazy old guy, and head off to find the game's title. I then come to the last devastating realization of the run. Dwarven and Amunculi are immune to my robes. Well, it's not really that devastating as my healing and flesh spells are good enough to get me through with little effort. Plus, my Become Eukaryote shout helps me out a ton. After putting some Falmer out of their misery, I mash buttons, pick up the Elder Scroll, watch a glorified cutscene, and fight Alduin, the World Eater himself. Remember how I said the robes don't affect dragons? Yeah, this is the first time where that becomes an issue. Parcel sacks can only take so much punishment before tapping out, making Alduin unkillable. Well, there is one more option. By dropping the robes on the ground and flinging them at Alduin with telekinesis, I'm able to slowly chip away at his health. Hey, I'm still technically damaging him with my robes, just not in the way you might have expected. My defense and healing are so good at this point that it just becomes a war of attrition. After a long and grueling battle, I slay Alduin, and he flies away into Discount Valhalla where I can't reach him. Cheater, time for the good old standard routine. <sighs> talk to Parthenex, talk to Arngear, talk to Tullius, talk to Ulfric, talk to Arngear, do the peace council. What the fuck is this piece of shit? And trap a fire-breathing dragon in a wooden brace. Somehow. 
Oda Vang forgets the concept of personal space, flies me to Skuldafen, I complete some puzzles, lure the Overlord into a flame trap so I can grab another backscratcher, run past Nakaren who is also immune to my robes, and take down Sun with relative ease. <laughs> Long. The fight with Alduin goes as expected. I stand back, let Sun get hit with a meteor so he can slice Alduin to pieces, and fling my robes at him one last time, slaying the World Eater and proving that yes, you can beat Skyrim with only Mirax robes. While this run was unorthodox, it honestly wasn't that much of a challenge. It's clear that Mirax robes aren't balanced for that early in the game, as the 100 points of damage, spell absorption, and knockdown make it a pretty decent piece of kit. In fact, I'm tempted to make a full-blown build based on this concept as it's actually pretty fun. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Constructive criticism is appreciated as well as suggestions for a new challenge run. With any luck, your idea might make it into the next video. This is Causal Loop, signing off. Peace.